Hey folks, it's Teresa at Stringfield Ridge Farm. Um, we're going to talk about making money on the homestead and saving money on the homestead. Uh, more about making money on the homestead because that's what I'm focused on right now. We've done a video on uh, ways to save money on the homestead. You can go back and look that video up. I'll tag it at the end. Uh, one of our main savings was getting rid of cable TV and getting the digital antenna which we paid about sixty dollars for because we got the kind outside that goes on the pole that's it we don't pay a monthly fee we paid a one-time sixty dollars and we get 21 channels uh, we love it it works great for us and it has saved tons of money and mostly I want to talk about making money on the homes I have tried to come up with some unique and different ways because there's the same old same old um, some people make a little money off of YouTube I don't know that I'll ever make any money off of YouTube I don't have a big following and uh, our videos we don't call them educational we list them in the category of people and blogs because we don't have a whole lot of how to mostly ours is just how we do it and we definitely don't say ours is the best way. So, <laughs> uh, we've, we've had a lot of failures and we've showed some of our failures. Most of the time we do, we work with what we have. That's kind of our motto is use what you have. I call our, I call some of the things that Lee does redneck, but it works, whatever works. And uh, a few times it don't work, a few times it don't work. And we always try to show that and say, you know, well, here's where we failed, you know. We show that every once in a while. I just done a video on the uh, quail, and um, the quail pen that he built was wonderful, but it wasn't exactly right. And we, he, we had used some chicken wire that didn't work, so we had to go back and put a different kind of wire on it. So you know that was a lesson learned. Uh, I just done a video on that, so check that out too. So I'll start there with the raise, uh, making money, making money on the homestead. Uh, one reason I started with the quail, um, well, the main reason they were given to me, but it kind of bartered and traded, and then I bought a couple from the same, a couple more from the same person. But one reason was um, because I uh, raised quail for money, and um, I know that locally there is a restaurant that is starting up. She hadn't got started yet. She's going to build, she's going to use all local. Uh, food and uh, so I'm thinking that if I'm raising quail she might buy quail and, for uh, me. I would like to pickle quail eggs and sell those at farmers market and what I plan to do at farmers market sell unique stuff that nobody else at the farmers market has and quail eggs pickled quail eggs will be um, something unusual that I don't think anybody else will have there. I could sell small jars of pickled quail eggs and um, hopefully I can sell to this restaurant and other things that I'm going to have at farmers market uh, is going to be unique and different stuff. We have a huge access to uh, elderberries. We have wild elderberries all over our place. And I always make elderberry jam and elderberry syrup and uh, and I dry elderberries for tea so I'm thinking that that'll be a good thing I can have at the farmers market we are gonna have a Pawpaw's survival camp for the grandkids and teach them some basic survival skills and I got to thinking that once we have our grandkids at one we might could offer that service to other uh, kids in the area or even adults if they wanted to come to well, local area here is um, a, a, a bottom a bottom land uh, like a wetland bottom land by the river and uh, there's lots of um, driftwood and things like that and um, I have so drift um, on eBay before not a whole lot. I sold, um, I had uh, two or three pieces, but I sold them for like 20 and $30. They were good, nice, big 
chunks of driftwood uh, and I believe that they went to people who had uh, um, reptile reptile cages and things like that of course um, odd jobs mowing and landscaping and things like that that you can do odd jobs photography some people are really good at photography and take great pictures and sell them what great like chickens and cows and all of the things that you can take pictures of on the homestead that photography probably has a good market out there uh, scrap metal there's always scrap metal somewhere I grew up around a, an old guy that um, that was what he done that was his living he went around and picked up scrap metal all over the place at little dump sites and um, um, people's backyards and you know he drove by and saw you had a old washing machine sitting out there he'd stop and ask for it uh, just and he collected cans and he went up and down the sides of the roads getting cans and so he scrap metal that was his job and he made a living at it you can set up a spot for a cam uh, camper rental spot uh, where we live going to the bottoms and a lot of people hunt down there and we could easily put up uh, about four or five camper spots at the front of our property up there where there's a flat spot up there. We could easily set up um, some little gravel spots to park and electricity and water. Uh, they are working on tourism in our area and trying to get tourism uh, to really grow here. You know, we may eventually do that. I've tried to talk Lee into it. He's against it. He's not real excited about doing that, but um, if they do get a lot of tourism to come to our area, that might be a really good income for us. So, um, so I'm gonna keep working on him on that. Also, I have seen, I, I don't think it's a big thing in this area, but it could be in your area. I have seen them sell firewood, especially if it's a, um, especially if it's a, a tourism spot. A lot of the little campsites and places and the uh, stores will sell firewood out in front. So, um, and anybody that burns firewood or has a fireplace needs a little firewood. So, selling cut firewood uh, can make you a little extra money. It's hard enough for, for us to keep our own firewood. So, that's probably not one we would get into because we would want to keep our firewood for ourselves definitely a, a, a good uh, possible income for uh, for some people and especially if you have more time to cut firewood than we do freelance writing I know there's several um, youtubers uh, homesteaders that do freelance writing and, uh, and, and and books some of them do online books or publish their own book uh, there's several that have done a cookbook and uh, I am fixing to work on, I promised a while back that I was going to work on it and I just haven't had time. But I am going to work on my mom's cookbook called uh, Granny Walton's Cookbook. I'm going to work on that as soon as I can and put that on an Etsy store. And I'll let y'all know when I get that up. I just haven't had time. You could sell those at the farmer's market or online on an Etsy store or wherever. I am a newspaper editor and I write, um, I write for the newspaper. And so I'm hoping that as I do cut my eyes and eventually uh, leave that job, I'm hoping I can still freelance write for uh, the newspaper so that may be a, an income I can keep as I grow older but not be full-time editor just freelance for the same people and they are always looking for freelance writers so if you're in an area and you don't know if you can write at all and a lot of times they're looking for sports writers or um, I, I know ours uh, uh, my, the company I work for um, they will uh, freelance sports writers and um, freelance uh, a little bit of writing here and there and um, you might check on that in your area with your local newspaper and there's probably several newspapers around your area that you could check on and they might take some freelance writing uh, on something that you know a lot about 
there's other things my dad uh, when I was growing up we had uh, my dad owned a service station a gas station full service gas station and at the same time we had uh, at one time an orchard and we sold uh, he sold fruit and, and stuff from the orchard but also at the same time he was a go-getter he done commercial fishing so that's another little income there if you got into that uh, we probably wouldn't do that but it's if you like fishing or if you have a boat and can do a lot of fishing uh, you can commercial fish you can sell them from your own house out of your freezer clean them put them in the freezer put up a sign that says fish for sale uh, we had a problem around here with Asian carp and um, a lady from China came here and started a business called Two Rivers Fishery and they buy Asian carp and process it and ship it to China where it's a delicacy. You can fish for Asian carp and sell to her. So, um, also trapping. Talking about fishing, you can, when you talk about fishing, commercial fishing, you gotta talk about trapping. Uh, my dad also trapped. I'm telling you, he was a go-getter. He also trapped. Uh, he trapped um, mostly coons and uh, he would get the big pelts and send them off. I'm pretty sure you can find those places online, but uh, occasionally he'd get a mink or something and get big bucks, you know. Uh, and now we can beaver. Um, you have to know your area. You have to check within your area and see what you can trap in your area and all that. And you have to buy traps and go check your traps and all that stuff. Not something we're gonna do but definitely a good source of, of extra income there. You can do two or three different things like my dad. He also hunted uh, ginseng and bloodroot and golden seal. And he had a lady that lived uh, about to our way that bought those from him and he would, um, he would go hunt those in the woods, dry them out at the house, and then maybe twice a year he would haul them to this lady and that's pretty good money if you get enough of it babysitting and elderly sitting if you're a homesteader and you're home all the time you're doing a lot of your work during the week you might can babysit a couple of kids on the weekends and then of course the last thing I have is part-time jobs you can always if you need you know, and, and, and that's kind of where I want to be probably is um, I want to have time to garden and can and still work a little bit enough to help out with money some. So that's all I've got. Um, these were just um, unique ways that you can make money. One more thing. One more. I'm not done. One more. I just went and took uh, jars of food uh, that I canned that I took to the local county fair. And the morning I was leaving to go out there, I remembered that my mom, when I was growing up, used to do that, and she always took a vase of zinnias. And I thought, hmm, I could probably do that. I've got those zinnias that popped up in my herb garden unexpectedly, and they were blooming like crazy. So I went out there and cut some zinnias and put them in a... Um, green mason jar it was really pretty i'm going to show a picture and um, i won a couple of i won a grand prize in first place on my beans green beans i won a blue ribbon on the uh, zinnias and then everything else got like second place so i ended up winning $43. So I told him, I said, I will be back next year double. <laughs> so, hey, there's all kinds of little ways to make money that maybe you don't even think about. You have to get creative. So I thought that was pretty neat and I was really proud of that. So uh, thank y'all for watching. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe and watch some of our other videos.